Hi, this is Marco Pimentel. Welcome to the podcast, Someone Like You. In this first season, you'll discover founders, creators, entrepreneurs, and business owners who are passionate about creating business models with lasting, sustainable climate solutions. What we have is not just an amazing product, not just an amazing solution for the consumers, but also a solution for what is coming. We, we are going from 7.5 billion people to 10 million people. And the big question is, how are we going to feed all those people? Omega-3s and proteins. When you think of omega-3, you likely think of fish oil. When you think of proteins, you probably think of meat proteins or maybe plant-based ones like peas. And when you think about how they're produced, it's likely an image of fish from fish farms or large ranches with cattle or maybe rows and rows of peas in a field. But what about a new type of farm? One that does not require any precious fresh water or an abundance of rich soil. All it needs is sunshine, desert land, and salt water to produce an incredible plant, algae. To be honest, I had no idea how incredible this invincible plant could be or how minimal and impactful the farming practice could be. And that brings me to this week's episode. We welcome Miguel Catalud, a social entrepreneur in the alternative proteins, agriculture, food, tech, and nutrition industry, and CEO and director of Iwi, an innovative and sustainable algae-based nutrition company. Iwi grows a microscopic algae strain rich in omega-3, This algae is used to produce health-conscious, plant-based protein nutrition for everyone. Iwi uses salt water and the sun for minimal environmental impact and grows algae using non-irritable land, creating jobs in rural communities of Texas and New Mexico, reinventing the wheel of farming by reaping the benefits of nature without doing any harm to the environment, and as a reward It produces nutrient-dense food with more essential amino acids and vital nutrients using much fewer resources per acre than traditional farming. Here is our conversation. Miguel, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Marco. You have an incredible background, social entrepreneur uh, in the alternative protein sector, agricultural food and tech, nutrition industry, and you've been a farmer. So I'd uh, love to just understand a, just a bit of your background and how your background got you uh, into algae and, and how, that all, how that all came to be. So uh, I will try to do it briefly. Uh, I've been in the food business for over 25 years was uh, running a, a company in, in Europe and we were growing over 800 million pounds of vegetables per year, opened a company in the United States, always plant-based nutrition, uh, vegetables, frozen food, complete meals, all different type of proteins, animals and, and plant-based. And at a certain point in 2015, really wanted to do something different and, and make an impact in the world and discover the most effective and efficient vegetable I've ever seen in my life, which is a microscopic vegetable called nanocoropsis. It's a microscopic algae, and and here we are. Uh, it was an existing platform with a technology, Israeli, uh, uh, Israeli technology, and uh, a technology from Israel, and we took it to a completely different level. We, we took that, we scaled up, we were able to grow this nano scale. We are the only ones in the world. And and what we do now, we we grow this amazing vegetable using non arable land, salt water, the sun as the main source of energy. We consume CO2, we release oxygen. We are creating jobs in the middle of nowhere in order to produce mainly two things, a very unique oil, which has a super high content of omega-3 and very unique omega-3, the highest absorption omega-3 in the planet, and a very unique protein which more total essential amino acids than even egg and whey and more branch chain amino acids than egg and whey. So we are also a superior protein, extremely bioavailable and very soluble. So it will allow us to tackle some of the convenience challenges that many of the protein products have. So super exciting. It absolutely is. And you've so far, what you've created is a consumer product 
Now, are you, because, you know, if you think about farmers, farmers often farm and obviously a lot of them will, will farm and sell their own products, but often it's some, you know, it's a, it's a food production. And then in, you take a, take that food and you create a consumer product. You're doing both. Or are you also selling your product to other companies to use your base ingredient? So we are a vertically integrated company. We go from the farm to the consumer. Uh, we have an ultimate goal, which is making an impact in the world. We are transforming farming as we know it, and we are also changing nutrition as we know it. Obviously, our main goal is iwi, but we are also collaborating with other companies as we scale and, and we grow and we have plenty of capacity in order to create a better food supply chain in the world and eventually transform the omega-3 and really make an impact in, in the protein world too. Yeah. So I guess that in order to do that, we, of course, our main goal is iwi, but we are also collaborating with some strategic companies in order to spread, I would say, this new technology and make this a better place and a better world. Iwi, I love to just kind of start with a, a bit of the inspiration around just the branding aspect of it. And what was the inspiration behind the name and, and, and kind of that spark and that, that foundation of, of, of that brand building exercise when you decided that, okay, we, we have this product, now we got we to gotta start getting this into the hands of consumers. So, so we really wanted to create a, a brand and a name that would resonate with, with the world, with the planet, with sustainability. And, and we see the world as a, as a family. We want everybody to kind of reset, take better care of themselves. So uh, I believe we need to eat healthier and we have a serious problem of obesity in the United States, but worldwide too. And, and at the same time, people are not properly eating and, and they don't have the, the right nutrients and, and they are not healthy. So what we are trying to do is to bring a much healthier approach to our country and to the world in general, starting here, while making an impact to the world and creating a more sustainable solution. Iwi means a kind of family and, and Iwi life is what we wanted to say, creating products which is better for us and better for the planet. And this is how it, it was born, the name and the brand. Yeah, I'd love to just take a step back into just talking about Iwi and its and its products and and the just so people get a good understanding of how how does how does somebody replace what maybe they have currently or start to work or start to use and buy iwi products and understand like where does it fit in on the in in someone's in someone's life so we we know about mega-3s and and often um we talk about fish oils um you know you get your mega-3s from fish oils and and that's a pretty common marketing and and that that's been going around for many many years and um you know, there's hemp oils, there's fish oils, there's, there's, there's a lot of ways to get this. But can you just explain a little bit around what what's the consumer product and how do people consume it? I'm going to try to not to get too technical and, and to be as brief as I can. Number one, omega-3 is one of the essential nutrients we need to survive and to live. Our brain and a big part of our organs contain a, a, a lot of omega-3 and we need to consume omega-3 in order to be healthy, just as a, just to, to live, right? There are different sources. The most popular one and the most common is the fish oil. But what people don't know is that fish do not produce omega-3 naturally. It is the algae they eat through their lives what provides them with the omega-3. So what we do is we go directly to the source. Fish oil, it has... Potentially some challenges related to flavor and maybe some of the uh, many people don't like it because they, they, they don't trust the traceability, don't know where it is coming from. Um, in, in our case, what we do is we are vertically integrated. We control the, the water we use, the land we use, the source. So we have full traceability of our product. And in addition to that, we are we are the only ones. Iwi is the only omega three in a polar lipid form. What it means, it has phospholipids and glycolipids. To make the story short, fish oil is in a triglyceride or free fatty acid form. 
the body cannot absorb much of that. And that's why people talk about 1,000 milligrams, 600 milligrams, 1,500 milligrams of fish oil. And what we've proven is it is not important what you give to your body. It is important what your body takes and absorbs. So we have clinical studies proving that we are almost three times higher absorption than fish oil and, and over 70% higher absorption than krill oil. And why is that important? Because we also have different clinical studies showing it. In our clinical studies, we saw a significant decrease in total cholesterol, significant decrease in VLDL, significant decrease in um, triglycerides and the CRP, which is the inflammatory function. So, and we have thousands of testimonials from customers saying that this has been a game changer in their lives. So to answer your question, fish oil and then krill oil, which is not a sustainable way coming from krill, was the only possibilities available in the market. Then there's all, also other algae oils, which is always better plant-based, but they come from fermentation. We are the only ones producing EPA grown in open ponds with chlorophyll and with these glycolipids that provides this higher absorption. So our product is the best omega-3 available in the market. It is plant-based and it's extremely sustainable. So the way we approach market was creating products which are better than anything existing in the market. I, I always say that it is easier to change the world than to change consumer habits, but we need consumers to be on board if we really want to change the world. And, and the way to bring consumers on board is not by saying we are sustainable, we are plant-based. You need to provide customers with a much better solution than what they have. And if you do, they will just switch because you are the best option they have and you are plant-based and you are sustainable. I hope that makes sense. It, it, it does. And that statement, uh, I'm, I'm nodding here because it's, it, it, it resonates where it is a hard, you know, people talk about uh, consumerism and, and, and people shopping and changing all the different habits and we need a bigger, bigger system change. But ultimately, if you can provide them something that is better, uh, then why wouldn't they switch and why wouldn't, why wouldn't they change? So to go back to the the product side of things, and I know you have other products than the the oil side of things. But does a natural a natural diet have enough oil or omega threes? Do do most people need to be supplementing omega threes in their diet on, on an ongoing basis? The answer is yes. And and, and look, I'm, I'm originally from Spain, as you know, and and your family comes from Portugal, and and we have a pretty healthy diet. We eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of seafood, a, a lot a lot of everything, right? Always on a sustainable way. We have farmers, we have a fisherman. So so it's something that, that we're doing for thousands of years, but still your body many times cannot take enough omega-3. So you really need supplementation or you need to complement that diet with omega-3 and, and other nutrients. And what we've provided our partners and our consumers is with the, the most natural, the most bioavailable and healthy form of omega-3 that you can find in the market. And we've done it on a plant-based way because this is our choice and on a fully sustainable way. As I said, we use non arable land, salt water, the sun as the main source of energy. We consume CO2, we release oxygen, and we are also making an impact in those rural communities by creating new jobs and, and, and new businesses. So what we have is not just an amazing product, not just an amazing solution for the consumers, but also a solution for what is coming. We, we are going from 7.5 billion people to 10 billion people. And the big question is, how are we going to feed all those people? There's not probably enough arable land, but for sure, there's not going to be enough fresh water. And, and, I, and look, this is what I've been doing for 25 years, right? Growing vegetables all over the world. And what we are bringing to the table, it's a solution that it is not competing with the existing farming because we are not competing for arable land and we are not competing for fresh water because we don't use fresh water. And we are much more productive in terms of oil and essential amino acids than any other crop in the planet. And we do it using resources that otherwise would not be utilized, like non arable land, salt water, the sun, and also CO2, which it's another problem that for us 
it, it's it, it's a need, right? Yeah. So to go back to understand how does it, how does it work? So how do you how do you grow this? And what is what is your farm? You, you you provided a few details, but maybe just to understand how does your farm work? So it's a very conceptually speaking, it's a it's a simple process. It's another vegetable. The the main difference with other vegetables are number one, it has no roots, it has no stems, no branches, no nothing. It's a single cell. It is perfection in terms of efficiency. It is a photosynthesis machine. It's unbelievable. It's the most beautiful microorganism you can dream. It duplicates every two weeks. It is super fast growing. We harvest twice or three times a week, which is just the growth. And we harvest 12 months a year. So it's fantastic because it's a new way of farming. And, and the beauty is that we can bring that farming to places in the planet where they cannot even dream about it. Deserts, we can just grow this algae in East Africa, Southeast Asia, uh, South of Europe. And now, you, you know, we, we have good friends there, but uh, in the desert of Texas, New Mexico, all over South America. So it is really a revolution in terms of bringing more food using resources that would not be utilized. But at the same time, we can make an impact in those communities where they could not even dream about working and even less to produce food in those you know, difficult lands, non-arable and, and without access to fresh water. But as many deserts in the world, actually most deserts in the world are full of water, the challenge is that water is so high salinity and high minerality, which is perfect for our marine algae, right? And so if someone were to see your farm from an aerial view, it would be kind of long, linear pools of wa salt water uh, and the sun, the sun basically, you know, baking that water and the water's being uh, split on a turbine. Is that kind of an accurate description of what uh, one of your yeah. farms looks like? So they, they are called raceways. They are like big pools, right? It's about an acre. It is like a football. Each of them is like a football field. We, we have a, a hundred of them. Well, less because a few of them are two acres. But uh, we have about a hundred acres in, in New Mexico and in about 55 acres in, in Texas. And you will see just like super long green pools with a paddle wheel. The reason we have a paddle wheel is the water needs to be in constant movement because we, the algae is in suspension. And by the way, you don't see the algae, it's green water uh, because it's microscopic. But obviously when, when we harvest and we use uh, a, a microfiltration system, similar conceptually to water treatment plants, what we do is we separate and, and we get the, the microscopic algae and, and it's like a green powder, which we then, we extract the oil and, and with the oil we do the supplements and then the dry part is basically pure protein which is what we're using for our protein products. And from a traditional acre, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, size and, and how would you compare an acre of iwi's uh, algae protein comparatively to, you know, either a meat or a plant-based protein on an acre versus eight acre basis? That, I know that that type of thing sometimes is uh, hard, hard to compare, but... Is it it's incredibly not. if it's not okay? It's not. <laughs> so, and, and again, I, I used to grow 150 million pounds or 180 million pounds of peas, for example, right? Now, everybody talks about peas. Um, we, we cannot compare pea protein with beef protein with our algae protein because they are completely different. Actually, uh, our protein is the one with which, which has the most essential amino acids. We have all the essential amino acids. So, we are more complete than egg and whey. If we break down the protein into essential amino acids, in an acre of land, you can grow about 20 pounds of essential amino acids per acre per year from peas. You can grow about 71 pounds of essential amino acids per acre per year from beef. We produce 6,000. So wow. our 150 acres equals to 45,000 acres of peas in terms of production of essential amino acids, using non arable land, salt water, the sun, consuming CO2 and releasing oxygen. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. So 
scale then? Like, how does this, like, obviously this is, this is big questions, you know, you, you obviously very excited around this, but how does this, this scale? So we're already at scale. Uh, we have capacity to completely replace the krill, the krill industry in the United States today. And we are going to, by the way. And in addition to, the, I mean, a lot of fees and a lot of people are going to thank us for that. We can replicate these farms all over the world. We already have a formula. We, we just basically copy and paste. Today we have two, but, you know, we have the potential. We are in conversations with many people in different countries. They are entrepreneurs interested on building farms for us, for us to operate and to buy all the product. There are governments which are willing to open this. So this is really going to be a revolution in farming. Within the next five years, we're going to see many other algae farms all over the world. And I truly believe this, I, I don't want to say that this is the solution for our food supply challenge in the world, but it's certainly one of the main solutions in the coming five years that is going to make an impact in not just our food and our nutrition, but also in healthy food and healthy nutrition. Every week on Someone Like You, we dive into stimulating conversations with founders, entrepreneurs, business owners, and the likes who are consciously and successfully creating sustainable business solutions for the long haul. Tune in every week for a new inspiring conversation on leading climate solutions. And if you're enjoying the podcast, don't forget, please subscribe on the platform of your choice and give us a rating and a review. When it comes to the the oil side of things, to me, it makes obviously krill and then even fish oils. It, it makes sense. Living on the west coast of Canada, we you know fish farming, you know wild populations of salmon are are absolutely decimated. Uh, we have fish farming on inland. You know, it's not really there. in In water is, is 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 terrible. Most people don't know that it takes like about four to five pounds of fish to produce one pound of farmed fish. So the, the whole aspect of, of of that makes you know a ton of sense to be able to to replace that. How do you? What do you see the usage? Obviously, you know, there's there's oil, but there's also you know protein. Like, do you do you anticipate ewe protein being able to? supply you know replace your whey protein in your shelves and, and and all the other proteins that are out there so again i don't want to talk about replacing uh, our protein we have a product we are going to be launching pretty soon some protein products to the market and again it's going to be the most amazing protein anybody has tasted we've made it flavorless odorless color neutral we can put a crazy amount of protein in a very small uh, container. So you can, it's going to be super convenient. We, we are going to be able to put over 25 grams of protein in a very small container. So under a convenient perspective, it's a, it's a game changer. I'm a protein consumer and having a product that is, you can get much more protein. We can make an impact in hundreds of millions of people in the United States that they don't consume enough protein. This protein is going to be absorbed much faster than any other protein available in the market. Our, just to give you an idea, normally the protein others, they have 50 to 60 to 70, 65% protein content. Our protein has 85% content, over 90% bioavailability and extremely high solubility. We have all the essential amino acids, each of them beat or exceed the requirements from the FAO. And we have more total essential amino acids than egg and whey, and even more branch chain amino acids than egg and whey. And we use branch chain amino acids to build muscle. So again, we are not here to replace anything. There's a space for everybody, but we are bringing a real alternative to the market, which is not going to be a wannabe protein. It's going to be on the top of the food chain. It's, it's plant-based and it's sustainable. So the the challenge, I guess, will be on the iwi side. From the consumer side, will be on the the marketing and the education. I guess because of this first, you know, being the being the first one to do this on a larger consumer side, there's education first, and then you get adoption adoption after. Has that been both, I guess, exciting and probably a reason why you've had a lot of success early, but also a challenge too to to provide that that education, or do, or do you think all of this? 
you know, the, the idea of what Omega-3 is has been educated enough for the consumers that that, that marketing effort is going well. So, so that's a very important question. Everything we did since the very beginning was new. Growing the algae, nobody has been able to grow this algae at scale ever. Uh, nobody has been able to put together these soft gels that we did. And go to market and talk about algae omega-3? Really? Are you kidding me? So it, it took a lot of time, a lot of efforts, and a lot of money, and a lot of investment in order to educate consumers. Now we are scaling exponentially. We are doubling the size of the company every year. We have, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers on our website that have changed their lives just by switching to 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 iwi and what we are seeing we we are on the main retailers and we are getting to many others in the coming months uh as i said we are growing exponentially in our iwilife.com uh, website amazon we are available almost everywhere whole foods uh we are growing also exponentially with them as well as sprouts and and IGB, vitamin shop, so in the main retailers and, and, and getting into many others. Uh, you will find us uh, all over the country. Very, I mean, you can find us all over the country, but you will find us in 80% of the main retailers uh, within the next few months. Same thing with the protein. Once people understand that this is not a plant-based alternative, but this is their best alternative, which happen to be plant-based and sustainable, you have believers forever. And it's our consumers, it is our customers, it is our partners, our best sales force. The mouth to mouth, it is amazing how it's working because once you try it and once this make an impact in your life, in your blood tests, in, in your just everyday quality of living, you will be telling your friends, your family, your kids to start taking this. So this is what is happening with our uh, Omega-3 and our supplement line of products. And same thing with the protein. But now the brand is just better, well-known. We are present in all the main retailers, and we are also becoming a champion in many of them. Our technology is going to be adopted by many companies. I truly believe there's going to be a major shift. I think krill oil is going to disappear within the next three to five years, and we are really the only high absorption alternative in the market. We have the technology. We have a patent on that technology. So, so that is going to be good. Same thing with the protein. Uh, many of our customers are going, they are already screaming about our protein products and they are waiting for us to launch. So yes, education is going to be a big part of our investment. There's still a lot to do, but thankfully consumers are smart. Every day they do a better research. They look for traceability, quality, uh, you know, good and safe products. And this is what we are providing them with. And what, if we think about the future, what what do you see Iwi's products also expanding into your algae, you know, the algae base being expanded into for for consumers? Is, uh, you know, obviously once you have protein, a, a protein base that obviously expands exponentially, but what, what are your thoughts around how consumers might see or consume your products into the future? So, so first of all, the, just... Just the omega-3 market is a $44 billion market worldwide. So we have a lot to do there. The supplement business is over $200 billion market out there. So we have a lot to do there. Uh, but now what we are working on is in functional foods. How can we, first of all, get better foods that taste better, that are more convenient to our consumers, and, and we can make a healthy, we can become a healthier alternative for them? And then that nutrition, we are also combining it with our supplementation. So we are making a lot of functional foods. There's a lot of that thing coming. So we truly believe we can iwi uh, our consumers' lives and, and help them becoming healthier while they make an impact in the world by switching farming and nutrition as we know it. And how how do you fund all of this all of this growth? And how did you fund it in in the beginning? Was it through venture? Was it through grants? Through research projects? Uh, through through government? So so we, we to, to be completely honest, one of the things that and to me this is very important. In order to be successful, you need to be laser focused. So our company has been fully funded by private money. And we have individuals, companies, and now lately we have investment groups 
the beauty, and we've been lucky to have amazing partners and amazing investors. We, we have some of the world-class investors that you can find in some of the super well-known plant-based companies. They are investing in us. They are people who don't have the time concerns as other groups have. So they really want us to make an impact in the world. Of course, they, they want the company to be economically successful. And by the way, we have to. If we want to be fully sustainable, we need to be economically sustainable. And the production units we make, they also need to be economically sustainable, right? So it's very important that we make a profitable company if we want to make an impact. I believe in conscious capitalism. And in this case, the business we've built and the model we've put together, the bigger the business, the bigger the impact, and the bigger the impact, the bigger the business. So that's why we've been lucky to attract some of those smart investors and and I'm I'm happy and proud to to be able to say that we are not just getting money with those investors we are getting a lot of support a lot of advice a lot of connections to other companies retailers so so we've been blessed uh, not just with the team of executives that we have which is amazing is the best executive team I've ever worked with in my life also, the investors and the partners we have, our friends are extremely committed with the environment, extremely committed with healthy nutrition, and extremely committed with the company. So, so we cannot be happier and, and more blessed than, than, than we are. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And when you think about venture, considering where you're at, and, and we'll maybe just chat a little bit around just the the scale side of what's in the future for, you know, how many acres you're planning, do you have land that's secured, but uh, has all of it been equity, or do you now start to look at the debt when you start to build these facilities and kind of scale that part of the side of the business? So the model we have is, uh, we, we own one of the farms, we have a partnership with, with uh, another group for, for the second farm. And, and the way we are building the business is we, we are uh, creating a business model for farmers to build those farms with our advice, with our guidance, with our technology. And uh, we have a technology transfer agreements and we, we just help them with the technology in order to build, they operate. And in the end, I, I used to grow 800 million pounds of vegetables and, and you cannot grow 800 million pounds of vegetables per year in your own land. So, so this is the model we have. We are partnering with farmers we are just sharing with them our technology. So it's great for them because they have a business. And for us, it's great because we can scale extremely fast without having to deploy that amount of, of, of equity. And, and we use our equity to R&D and, and new product development as well as market development and, and, and branding, right? So the so if, so a farmer partner would have the land, they would fund the development of the the pools, and you would at the same time provide an agreement to provide your technology and how to grow it, and then they would form a partnership with you to sell sell the finished goods to you. Yeah, uh, and and it's a combination, right? We 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 own farms, we we have this partnership, and and this this will be the combination in the future. But but the beauty of our model is we we really want to share the business. We believe in this. Again, this is not just about sustainability; it's also social sustainability. So we believe about creating those jobs and not just jobs, I mean, businesses for farmers to grow this in different parts of the world. And this can be their way of living. And we can just guarantee buying all the, all the quantity they produce with our support, with our supervision, with our guidance, with our agronomists uh, supporting and helping them. Right. So, again, this is much bigger than EWI. This is much bigger than us. Uh, this is going to be a new way of farming, a new way of producing food, a new way of nutrition. Five, ten years, how many acres are you hoping to have um, farming? You know, the beauty of this is not just more acres, it's about making those acres much more productive. We increase productivity every day. We are becoming more efficient, more productive. We produce longer, faster, higher quality and, and, and that is very important. D don't forget, now there's a crisis coming. And besides the energy that everybody talks about, there's not enough fertilizers. And 80% or 70% of the cost of fertilizers is depending on gas. So there's going to be a shortage of gas in my in Europe and, and other places. But in addition to that, there's not enough uh, phosphates nor enough nitrogen. 
So even to scale conventional farming with the existing nutrients and fertilizers we have, it's going to be a big challenge. So for us, it's not just using non-arable land, salt water, it's also becoming more efficient. That's why we every day we produce and every year we produce product with less, using less fertilizers. We don't use any pesticide, it's all natural. And the water, even when it's salt water, we reuse over 97, 98% of the water we harvest over and over again. Basically, we lose the evaporation water. The, the rest, we reuse it over and over again. So we, we are really conscious about the resources we have, regardless of resources that nobody else would use. We, we still want to be super conscious about that. So productivity and efficiencies are our everyday in order to be successful. So when you talk about acres in 10 years, I see we should be able to be over 10,000 acres in the world. And if we do so, this is going to be a very serious, alter for sure, I think we will remove krill oil from the planet because I truly believe we should stop fishing in the Antarctic Ocean and just because that is the source of food for our planet. And we are an alternative to that. And today, with our capacity, we have the ability to replace krill in the United States and some of other countries. Within two years, we should be, or three, we should be able to replace krill worldwide. And in order to, and, and, but the more we, do, we grow on the oil, the more capacity we are going to have impact in the protein because it's coming from the same. So the limit is going to be driven by consumers. But I see a lot of acres coming online within the next 10 years. I, I promise you that. I, I, I believe it. And do you have much food waste? So like when this product gets into its, into the form, into a protein form and oil form, is there minimal food, food waste from the production? There's no food waste. Hmm. Yeah. We take everything. We use the oil for supplements. And then the rest is pure protein and what we call ash, which is basically salt from the salt water and, and maybe a little bit of sand. So we use everything. And that's the beauty of this product. There's no stems, there's no branches, there's no trunk. It is all a production unit and we use everything out of it. Well, Miguel, we're getting towards the end of our time. Uh, I could probably chat with you for, for hours on this. It's, a, it's an incredibly impressive of what you've built and, and, and your team. Um, just kind of one, you know, kind of last, last question. I'm, I'm a fan of the book, the, the Lorax, it, it somewhat inspired the branding of this. And I, I read it to my, my two boys. And it's a, just a story of how, you know, at the, at the end, a child gets a seed and, and they can change the outcome because of the seed. And uh, a lot of people ask, what can they do? And, um, you know, so what, what can people do or businesses do to take that first step towards change, you know, especially when it comes to our climate and, and the impact that we're, that we're facing? So I, I really like that. And I like that movie. I have two kids, Maria, who's 12, and Lucas, who is nine. And I mean, there's a video, uh, it was done uh, by Earth, by John Holden, about us. I, I strongly recommend you to watch that. It's uh, five minutes. And, and it's super important that our kids are even more conscious than us about just using the resources we have wisely, not using, not throwing away water, not throwing away food, uh, just recycling. Being, so, so the first thing that I, I always tell everyone is, first of all, we need to acknowledge where we are, understand how good or how bad we are in our businesses, in our lives, in our homes, because in the end, it's part of our philosophy, right? And once we have that, I I'm a big believer on small steps. And they talk about atomic changes and atomic improvements. And, and if every day we could, I guess you can improve yourself 1% every day, right? If you do it every day, at the end of a year, you are 365% better. And this is what we need to try to do. So as a business, we try to be more efficient on the transportation, on the packaging. How can we be use less, uh, you know, single-use plastic? And we created the the eWe pack that now we are launching in Whole Foods, for example, and in other places. So people are more conscious. So that is number one. But then there's small things, small decisions that we make 
when we buy, when we consume. Of course, we need to buy the best product for us and the best product for our families. But obviously, if they are equal, let's always try to find a more sustainable and, and, and green solution for, for us and for our family. And once we apply this to our life, our businesses, without really realizing and, and certainly bringing a better product to the consumers, we will already be making an impact to the world. There's not a small impact. And, and a good example is our algae, similar to Lorax. Our algae the, is a microscopic algae. You don't, you don't see it. And just with that thing, that thing has the ability to change farming all over the world and nutrition all over the world just from one tiny microscopic seed. If we just nourish it, we help it to just duplicate, grow, and, uh, and, and scale, we will really make an impact. So, so take that example in our everyday life. Everything counts. Every small act in our lives count. The way we dress, the way we eat, the way we drive, and uh, the, every single decision has an impact. So we just need to be conscious and be intentional about everything we do. And just with that, you will see how our life changes for the good and the world will change on the same direction. Thank you. Uh, it was uh, well said. And Miguel, I wanted to say thank you for joining me today. And uh, congrats to all the success so far. And uh, excited to watch what Ewe does. And, and excited to see products and expansion and, and getting this and education as well. So um, best of luck with everything. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much, Marco. Muchas gracias. Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado. <laughs> This podcast is co-produced with The Brand is Female. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Someone Like You. And if you did, please share this. We're a new podcast and I would love it if you could share it with a family member, friend, colleague, work colleague, share it on Slack, whoever you do, just share and spread the message of these incredible brands. Please also support these type of companies. They're doing the hard thing and the hard thing often takes a lot of people to get on board. And don't forget, please subscribe on the platform of your choice and give us a rating and review. I'm Marco Pimentel. Thank you for joining us today. For more information on someone like you, you can find us on Instagram at someone like you podcast with all the links to the podcast, our website, and more information about the brands that we feature. Thank you again. <laughs>